Hey everyone and welcome to V2 of our pre-patch leveling guide. V1 was nerfed a little bit, but do not worry, you still will be able to level up characters speedily in Shadowlands pre-patch and beyond. And hey, even with the Wad route, I've got a new optimization for you too. Now, a lot of things have changed, and now, leveling fast is about gaming breakpoints and working out the best route, and that means one that interacts well with important new parts of the leveling process. Milestones, such as the new mount unlocks, then things like the availability of zones, and matching up your character's movement speed to the right zone. Working all this out is a big, fun puzzle, and the good news is that with today's info, you will be able to have whatever max level character you want in a speedy fashion. Now, over the last year, I've learned a new way to go fast and save money with Skillshare. Today's sponsor, where the first thousand of you to click my link below will get a free trial. And it's just 10 bucks a month after that. And with that, there's something that has saved me so much money. And that is from plant to cup. Do you want to, in an hour, learn how to make cafe tier coffee at home? Here's a hint from me, you do. I mean, like, I now make at-home coffee that is better than the vast majority of local cafes in Belfast, and far cheaper as well. And all it takes is a little bit of knowledge. I mean, I'm, te I'm telling you, this is like nearly 10 times cheaper than a cafe, far nicer, and I can try out different beans from around the world. It's absolutely sweet. Plus, if you're stuck at home, you can't really go to cafes, then it's really good not having to rely on instant or price-gouged machine coffee that doesn't taste that great. So, across these quick, actionable segments, you're basically going to learn a lot about coffee, a lot that you can actually put into practice, and you'll be able to give yourself and your family delicious and cheap coffee. And that is Plant a Cup on Skillshare, the online learning platform for creatives that is really awesome. It's perfect. And the first thousand of you to click my link down below will get a free trial. So why not make yourself some great coffee, save some money. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And with that said, let's get into it. This entire thing is based off changes to leveling, so I'm going to ensure you understand them. Blizzard have revamped the leveling process of WoW such that you can level from level 10 to level 50 in any expansion, with of course level 50 being the equivalent of 120 before the squish. Now, they've also made leveling faster across the board, and this means that levelers will generally benefit from less XP needed to level and more XP per quest. It is all just fast. But it also means that we can target the fastest expansions and the fastest zones in the game to increase our leveling speed. And doing this can cut leveling times down from 20 plus hours to easily and repeatedly under 10 hours, with six hours being, I believe, leave speed level tier, that's where Mephisto is at the minute, eight hours being, I'd say, average for a decently experienced player like myself, and uh, who knows, but basically, if you follow this guide and you do the stuff well, you'll be getting eight hours no matter what. You'll almost certainly be getting faster than that. Now, heirlooms have also changed. They've lost their XP bonus. To make a long story short here, though, you still do want to wear all of the heirlooms. Of course, it's handy to have the gear, but also the full set bonus will reduce the rate at which rested XP is consumed by 60%. And this is important because if you plan to level a character across a few days, then man, this is a tremendous boost to your leveling speed. It will actually let you get faster leveling times than those attained in this video. And that's because in this video, it was basically all done in one sitting. But if you are spreading your leveling across, let's just say four different play sessions over seven days, and you're getting rested XP whenever you log off, then you will have lightning fast leveling times. And this is something, getting that rested XP and combining that with the heirloom, this will be particularly welcome as you start to hit the 40s. Then, of course, an additional benefit to the heirlooms is that they can be enchanted, and generally speaking here, you are going to want elemental force on your weapon or weapons, you'll want mark of the satyr on your neck, and then you can go and put secondary stats in your rings, or perhaps glorious stats in your chest, but mark of the satyr and elemental force are the most important ones to remember. Then also there is another change. Blizzard have removed all experience potions from the game, bar the draft of the 10 lands. And this costs five service medals from the Battle for Azeroth service medal vendor. That's the Warfront currency, so you will want to get a few of those. Then also, mount unlocks have been changed, with slow ground being level 10, 
fast ground being level 20, slow flying being level 30, and fast flying being level 40. Now this is quite important because each one of these represents a bit of a milestone and a time will you be taking a break from where you are in questing to go back to say Stormwind or Orgrimmar to learn the new skill. So working in those natural trips back to Stormwind and Org as a part of your leveling, that's something that you do have to think about. Okay, with that said, let's talk about preparation for your character. Okay, I'm going to keep this bit quick and simple. So, load out your character with a full set of enchanted heirlooms and then seven to nine drafts of the ten lands. Now, past that, you might want to get some movement speed items like the various movement speed potions, gun boots, which are ridiculously fast but a little bit expensive, and some goblin gliders. Now, on my speedish run that got eight hours, well, I didn't use any speed items. That was partially because I was lazy. It's also partially because, well, I think that most people who are watching this video want to level up a character quickly. I don't think they're focused on getting a, you know, a real speedrunner's time, right? So I think people just want a quick, you know, a quick leveling experience. And I think that optimizing this, like the seconds, I'm not really sure if that's sort of in the scope of what's going to be useful for this video. I think for a lot of people that will actually cost them time because they'll have to learn new routes and plan around those things. Now, you also, of course, will want to think about your Hearthstone. This is very important, especially if you're a player that's doing Warlords of Draenor and Legion leveling, because if you are, then you will get your Garrison Hearthstone or your Dalaran Hearthstone. So if you're getting those, then I would recommend setting your regular Hearthstone to be the one that is at the tavern that is closest to the Mount Trainer in your capital city. For the Alliance, that means the Pig and Whistle Tavern in the old town of Stormwind. Then also, add-ons are an important part of preparation. I would say if you're doing any of the Cataclysm and Gamer revamp zones, then get NPC scan. The reason why is that the rares in those zones actually do give a decent amount of XP if you kill them. Then of course, Azeroth Autopilot is a must. It's an incredible add-on for taking human error out of the process, and it gives you very, very fast routes courtesy of Mephisto. Now, generally speaking, I would say that you should just choose efficient zones and work out a good overall plan, and then let Azeroth Autopilot do the details details, you know, the actual path throughout each zone, that will ensure that you're doing things in a way that's optimized for travel time and that you won't miss out on quests that are worth doing. Now, this was not an option for me in the PTR because the routes had not been updated. I do believe, though, that they are going to be updated for the pre-patch. That said, though, Warlords of Draenor is my focus, and I do know WAD pretty well. Now, also, Leatrix Plus is another add-on that you really should get. You want to get that and then activate its junk selling auto-repairing, cutscene skipping, and fast looting features. Fast loot, seriously, is lightning fast and worth getting. Then finally, this isn't a bit of preparation, but uh, it is something you should do, and that is turn on war mode. It is a 10 to 30% XP bonus that I do believe is worth the risk of PvP happening to you, and war mode is available from level 20 onwards. So that does mean that whenever you go back to get your fast ground mount, you should also flick on war mode for that XP boost. Okay, that basically is the preparation covered. Let's go through each of the expansions that are available to you. Cataclysm is a really fascinating one, so its zones can be great, but overall leveling via Cataclysm may not be ideal, and there's a few reasons why. So, all of the Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor zones, barring the end game ish Kata ones, they scale between 10 and 50. However, Hyjal, Deep Home, and the other ones, they only scale between 30 and 50. Now, I did extensive testing of these zones back in patch 7.3.5, including some fun data science-y stuff, and uh, all that data still holds up today, so the rules still apply. Now, a number of these zones were designed for players who do not have access to ground mounts, because you didn't have access to ground mounts at the time, and this means those zones are just designed to be played on foot, so they've got a super high quest density. Now, if you do those zones with a mount, man, it is extremely fast, especially if that's a flying mount. Now, Examples of such zones for the Alliance are Red Ridge, um, Loch Modan, and Darkshore. Loch Modan is especially fast. I mean, I leveled in my big run from 45 to 50 there, and it was breakneck pace. Now, for the Horde, you're basically out of luck in Kalimdor, but Terrace Fall Glades down to Silver Pine Forest and Hillsbird Foothills are really great, especially Silver Pine, which is absolutely incredible. It's got a high density of quests, and they're all, they basically just follow you down the zone. It is so, so well laid out for leveling fast. 
Now, other zones though, like say Westfall or Elwyn Forest, are a little bit less efficient, right? You really, you're only fast there if you make great use of your Hearthstone. Now that said, once you've got full flying mount speed, which is at level 40, these zones still will be quite fast. The downside, however, is that throughout any of this, you can't really plan to use your Hearthstone to actually get around zones faster. And the reason why is you will want that set to your home city so you can get the mount training. Now that does mean that you therefore can't use your Hearthstone to quest faster within a zone, um, because if you did use it to cut out travel time, then you just have to fly back to Stormwind or wherever for the mount training anyway. So that's like a subtle little bit of Cataclysm questing that does actually hold it back. As it stands though, questing through the old world can get super fast once you fly, and uh, there are a few zones that you can knock out pretty quickly. However, overall, it's not extremely fast because of the travel time between zones and the back and forth to your main city. Now, this does not mean that Kata is not useful. A level 30 player who can fly fast will be able to get a lot of XP by doing Red Ridge and uh, Loch Modan, or by perhaps doing Terrace Fall down to Silver Pine if you're there with the Horde. I mean, hell, Dark Shore down into Felwood is another pretty good double act. So, view these things as fast little options that you could work in if you wanted to. Horde players can of course travel to the Undercity pretty easily with the teleporter, and Alliance players can travel to Red Ridge easily and then get to Loch Modan by using the Twilight Highlands portal in Stormwind. Uh, speaking of which, let's actually talk about those 30 through 50 Cataclysm zones. Hyjal is decently fast, but it's not as fast as, say, Shadowmoon Valley, Loch Modan, or Gorgrant. Uh, Deepholm is also actually pretty decent as well. It is pretty fast. Uldum, though, is a bit too spread out, and uh, the same goes for Vashir. Now, Hyjal and Deepholm, they, I think, can be integrated very easily into leveling runs, and this is because you'll be porting back to your capital city anyway to get mount training, at which point you can just go to the Cataclysm zone portals, and bam, you'll be straight into the questing of either one of those zones if you actually want to be. So, that is Cataclysm. It is decent and okay overall, but it does have a few blazingly fast leveling zones. While each of these expansions has got its own charms, basically none of them are fast to level in, and therefore we're not going to be covering them in this video because this video is all about leveling fast. So, let's move on. Yep, Warlords of Draenor. Even with the treasures and the bonus objectives nerfed, and even the Gorgron quests nerfed, it's still incredibly fast. And part of this is just because of how amazingly well it fits into the pace of the new 10 through 50 journey, especially for the Alliance players. Shadowmoon Valley is just an incredible zone to level in at the very start, especially if you use the split technique that I accidentally stumbled upon in my latest run. Then Gorgrond is just super dense, it's packed with XP even post nerf, um, the other zones are a bit slower though, but they are pretty decent, we'll get a little bit more into the details on this later on when I talk about the run. Next up we've got Legion, so Legion is actually not hamstrung by the artifact quests, many people thought that you would have to do the artifact acquisition quests to, uh, to quest up in Legion, that's false, you don't need to, I mean would you want them anyway because you could just be using an heirloom weapon, you see once you hit Dalaran, just get a goblin glider and fly straight down to the Into the Fray quest in Azuna, you can just get straight to it. Izuna is okay for leveling, and Valtra is really quite fast for leveling, we found. High Mountain and Stormheim then would be fast, but I would say only if you're doing them with flying unlocked, which won't be a problem, because it took us 4.5 hours to hit level 33 via um, Asuna and Valtra, and of course that 4.5 hour time though, that did also cover getting an artifact. Um, so if you weren't getting an artifact, that would be faster. Uh, still, though, even if we did skip out the artifact, Warlords of Draenor would be a bit faster. Overall, basically, the Warlords of Draenor zones are just faster. I mean, while you are gliding down into Azuna, Warlords of Draenor levelers will be getting a level every two to four minutes by doing the Warlords of Draenor intro sequence. That really is quite fast. Now, you may think that Legion invasions are a bit of an ace in the hole here. They are worth thinking about, but they're not super great. They are relatively weaker than they are in the past based on our testing. Now, if you've got flying, then the XP rewarding uh, world quests there, they do give you like... 25% of a level when you're like in the mid 30s, and that is pretty decent, but 
that's only really good if you can, you know, get to them pretty fast and do them pretty fast. Certainly, I'd say if you were doing like Warlords of Draenor or Cataclysm leveling, I don't think it would be worth going to Legion stuff just to do the Legion invasions. So that's Legion. It is not as good as Warlords of Draenor, but assuming you actually skip the artifact acquisition, yeah, it is pretty good. Battle for Azeroth essentially, I would say, is fine to level in, but it is just a bit slower than Legion and Wad in terms of things like the quest density. And to be honest, I mean, I doubt many endgame focus players want to spend much time there anyway these days, so basically it's not that relevant and we're just going to move on to the actual big run. Okay, time to talk about my speed run. So, this came in around eight hours of time actually spent leveling. Now, as you'll see, I actually did run a few experiments. Those did cost me time, but I also did discover a nice optimization that I can pass on to you. And I'm also pretty confident that I could do this in seven hours on my next run. So with that said, let's just go. Okay, the Warlords of Draenor intro experience gives you five levels. It is super fast and it's pretty awesome to do. Uh, the travel time is low, the quest density is decent. It is certainly faster than trundling around Elwyn Forest or something like that. And what's even better though, and this is what I love, is it actually functions incredibly hitting you a, with a certain break point if you are in the Alliance, because if you start Shadow Moon Valley at level 15, it's super great. And that's because the initial bit of Shadow Moon Valley is actually extremely dense in terms of quests. And that means that you only having a slow ground mount is actually not even a problem. So what you do there is you do all of the quests to set up your garrison, then you head down to Khadgar and you do Khadgar's quest line. And then when you're just, when you've completed but not handed in the final stage of his quest line, you go over to the bonus objective and the wanted poster that are around the mushroom cave. And you just do all that stuff at the mushroom cave. Then you clear those out. You head to the road that leads out of your garrison. You go there and you go down that road till you find the wanted poster to kill the Alec. You then go kill the Alec and you return in the Khadgar quests. That will get you level 20 if you've been using the XP potion. If you don't, of course, you'll hit like level 20 a little bit later. Then, of course, you port back to Stormwind to get your fast ground mount training and also to activate war mode and then use your garrison hearthstone to go back to your garrison. Now, it was at this stage that I accidentally stumbled upon a bit of an increase to my speed because I did notice that the Gorgrond, uh, the Gorgrond breadcrumb was actually in my quest log, okay? Now, I had never, like, I remembered, basically, how dense Gorgrond was and how travel time there is so little of an issue, even when you don't have flying. And then I thought about how spread out the rest of Shadow Moon Valley is, and then I thought that, well, I'd never done Gorgrond so early. So I went to Gorgrond, and I followed its quests until level 30. And I selected the Sparring Pit building. That gives you fast, dense quests. I mean, seriously, that bit where you're questing with Rexar, you're just getting so many levels. Level 30 came so fast for me. I was super, super impressed. So by that stage, most of Gorgon's quests were actually done, but the Southern bonus objectives were essentially all left unfinished, and there was like one quest line that I hadn't done. So at this point, I was level 30, so I went back to Stormwind to learn my slow flying. Now, at this point, back in Shadow Moon Valley, I had almost all of the zone's quests ready to do, but instead I decided to run an experiment. That was Mount Hyjal. Hyjal was fine. I can't say I ran it super fast, but it was slower than I expected. It, certainly, it would have been slower than just blasting through the rest of Shadow Moon Valley. That would have been faster. But still, I stuck with Hyjal and I hit level 40. I then headed back to Stormwind to learn my epic flying, and then I garrison hearthed, and then I finished Shadow Moon Valley. At this stage, I was level 45, and I knew that hitting level 50 via Southern Gorgrond and the initial bits of Talador would have been super fast. So if I did them, I wouldn't have learned anything new. So instead, I decided another experiment. I went to Loch Modan. I used the Twilight Highlands portal, and I flew over to the lock. But, to be honest, I kind of flew cockeyed, and I cost myself a few minutes. That's what happens when it's like 5 a.m. But once I got there, it was pretty damn fast. Uh, starting from the tower at the south of the zone, I quested away, and I hit level 50 before I completed the zone. And you've got to remember here, like, Oh, this is so fast. And remember, levels 45 to 50 are the slowest levels yet. Uh, yet, in Lokmadan, doing 45 to 50, I was getting like, you know, I was getting per minute leveling times that were reminiscent of my experience when I was in the 30s. So 
Le Hoc Modern is bloody great. Um, even though I do think overall I would have been faster to have just went to Gorgrond and Talador and to not really have like done Hyjal and stuff. So what I think I'm going to do though in my next run as an experiment is when I hit 30, I want to go, I want to do Alwyn with flying, then I want to do Red Ridge, then I want to go up to the lock to see what that's like. But anyway, look, if I had have continued on with Warlords of Draenor stuff, it would have been a sub eight hour time. And I got eight hours even with Hyjal, I think not being that efficient and me losing a bunch of travel time stuff. And that's really a lot of the point here. The, uh, you know, it, it's just fast to level. Warlords of Draenor is basically just unbeatable early on. So that's really a core learning that I would pass on to you. Even if you don't want to do that much Warlords of Draenor stuff, in like two hours, you can hit level 30 by just doing the initial bit of SMV, as I explained, and then doing Gorgrond. That will take you to 30 so quick. And if you want to, like me, run experiments after level 30, then I would totally recommend doing that. But you will just get so much of a speed gain by going to, uh, by going to Shadow Moon Valley, or not Shadow Moon, by going to Warlord Trainer. You know what I mean, right? That is just so fast. You're 30 in no time, and then bam, you can go off to the races wherever else you want. Past that level 30 point, really the only thing that matters is your ability to efficiently do de uh, zones that are decently dense and sources of experience. So for most people, that will just be continuing through Warlords of Draenor. Personally though, I'm going to be trying out more Kata zones from 30 onwards in my future runs, but that's mostly because I'm a bit curious to see what will happen. So the core point here with today's video is that you will basically slice your time no matter what you do, you'll slice it to pieces by doing Warlords of Draenor as I described. Past that, just keep on going, and if you are decent at playing the game and you are in a decent zone to level in, you'll get between seven and eight and a half hours, 10 through 50. That will be roughly your time actually spent leveling. And uh, I mean, man, I'll say this, I sure I'm glad that I spent so much time doing Warlords of Draenor leveling guides back during that expansion because man, having that muscle memory and knowledge certainly has paid off. So there you go, that's the core of the video. Look, as long as you're in a decently quest uh, dance zone and you're questing well, your head's screwed on, you're going to be getting an eight to 12 hour leveling time. If you choose a super fast route like the start of Wad, as I described, you will have reliably eight hour leveling times. Um, that's what I achieved. You could get below that though. Now, to my knowledge, I believe the Mephisto, who uh, is also, to my knowledge, I think the best leveling speedrunner in the world, I think his most recent time is about six hours. Um, I haven't really checked it up. I just saw it on Twitter, but yeah, I need to look what he's doing. But look, here's a, a thing, right? I think it's pretty telling of how quickly the quest leveling goes. You know, if an average-ish, maybe average plus player like me with their head screwed on a bit can be pretty handily within two hours of the best of the best in the field. That said, I imagine Mephisto will get his time down because he's an absolute beast when it comes to leveling. Uh, but yeah, I do believe that what we've got here in today's video is the best route for most people. Uh, once this is live, I do have a few more experiments to run, so maybe, who knows, I'll be able to find some perfect way to weave in the Kata zones that I just haven't thought of yet. But overall, there you go. Leveling, it's damn fast. Uh, now you understand the main things. I definitely say this video was made entirely by like one or two sitting sessions of leveling. If you, though, are leveling across seven days and you can afford to park your character at an inn every single night to get that rested XP, and then you've got the 60% reduction to rested XP consumption because of the, is it the eight piece or whatever, the, you know, the full set of your heirlooms, then you're going to be leveling so much faster than this and it's going to be super efficient. So do keep that in mind. Okay, good luck. I believe pre-patch is here by the time you're seeing this and uh, who knows, I think we're all going to have a lot more characters in a week or two. Thank you very much for watching. And with that said, I will see you next time.